Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first episode of Cybens Opportunities in Biodiversity series. It will run every Wednesday at 6 30 p.m. Eastern until the end of August. My name is Lisa, uh, the project coordinator at Canadian Youth Biodiversity Network. And I have here with me Fallon, one of our policy coordinators. Today, we will be talking about our experience with the Canadian Conservation Court. And there will be a Q&A section at the end. So please feel free to add your questions or comments to the chat box. The video will also be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel after. So let's get started. Just let me share my screen. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Canadian Conservation Corps. Some of you may have heard it. So this is a program run by the Canadian Wildlife Federation. And it is for youth that are 18 and older. And it has uh, three different components to it. So the first part of the program is stage one, which is a wilderness adventure. So this is when you will go out with other members of your cohort. So for each cohort, uh, the Canadian Wildlife Federation will select 10 youth from across the country. So for example, in my cohort, there were um, people from Newfoundland, Quebec, Ontario, and British Columbia. Um, but they really do try to get as many um, diverse candidates from across the country as possible. And then you guys will go on uh, around a week to two week wilderness expedition uh, somewhere in Canada with Outward Bound, uh, who specializes in these kinds of wilderness expeditions that uh, build leadership experience as well as a, a lot of team building activities. So it, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, throughout the presentation, myself and Lisa will tell you a little bit more about our experiences throughout every part of the conservation course. So after you do the wilderness adventure, which is, yeah, um, about two weeks, you will be placed in immersive field learning. So um, in after your training and uh, sorry, after your wilderness expedition, um, you will be told where your placement is. So there's a process where you will kind of select where you want to go and then um, the youth engagement leader will decide who kind of goes where based on the characteristics that you've shown, as well as what your top three um, choices were uh, during, during the process. So these field immersive learning um, positions are again placed all over Canada. And oh, another part of another thing, important thing to mention about the program is that it is completely free. So it's funded by the Canadian government under the Canadian Service Corps. Um, so you just simply apply online. We'll show you the link um, later on in the slides. And then after you apply, you'll be called for the application is super like extraordinarily simple. You just put in all your information. You don't even have to put in a resume because no matter what your educational background is, is irrelevant to this program. So they they what they want is people who are interested in entering into con into conservation, regardless of whatever your educational background is, which I think is a really is a super excellent thing about this program and is what is really unique about it, right? They just they want to inspire and give youth the experience so that they can enter into conservation, regardless of what um, their previous work might have been. Um, yeah, so then the stage two is this immersive field learning. So you will go to your placement and that will be for a three month period. So in this three month period, you will be with two other people from your cohort. Um, so you gotta make friends in the beginning. No, but everyone's great. Um, all the candidates are, are selected and you, and you go through this bonding experience that is a wilderness adventure. So then afterwards, when, you are, when you're living together um, and doing your work placement, it, it's a really uh, amazing experience. 
And these work placements are in the realm of obviously <laughs> conservation and environmental science. Um, anything from like education and outreach to research to event planning. Um, so there's a diversity of options available at any given time, depending on the time of year that you apply, whether you are going to be in the summer, you'll have more opportunities to do field research, for example, whereas in the winter, it's obviously going to be more, more desk work, so education and outreach. So that's something to keep in mind when you are applying. Um, I believe right now the, uh, the Conservation Corps has been renewed for funding for, I think, three, two or three more years. Um, so there's still some time if you are deciding. And then after you do this three month work placement, your cohort will be brought back together in a location and there everyone will share their experiences of what uh, of, of what they were doing during this time and how it has benefited them. But after all, after you've done the wilderness adventure and the immersive field learning, you still have one component left, which is the outreach and service portion. And this is your stage three. So during this portion, you will um, conduct some sort of community service project, um, whichever one that you choose. And the Canadian Wildlife Federation will try to support you in whatever way they can. They'll help you with grant applications if you need, if you need some money. Um, for example, people in the past have um, created guitar picks out of recycled material, have done pollinator gardens, um, awareness campaigns, uh, sustainable living campaigns. So there's really uh, um, there's no limit to what you can do for your outreach and service portion at the end, um, and you'll still have the support of the Canadian Wildlife Federation. Okay, so yeah, so now we're going to talk a little bit about our personal experiences. Uh, so you can go to the next slide. Okay, awesome. So uh, yeah, oh, my name is Fallon Hayes. We, we said this already. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> and I am of the group, the BC Seals. We wanted to name ourselves the BC CCC Sea Seals but uh, marketing didn't allow it, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> so as you can see, here is my uh, cohort. Uh, and our location for our initial meetup was in Comox, British Columbia. And then we went uh, sea kayaking through the Southern Gulf Islands um, off of Vancouver Island. And it was truly an amazing, <laughs> super amazing, life-changing experience. Um, so you go and you meet these, all of these new people that you've never met before, but somehow you all connect really pretty quickly because you all have that same mission, right? Everybody is there because they have the drive for conservation. They have the drive for environmental science and they, and they want to get more experience um, in the field. So yeah, so we went sea kayaking and on our outward bound trip, we were allowed no cell phones. So the night before we set out, we all packed ourselves, made our last phone calls to our family and loved ones, and then um, put our cell phones away. Everybody looked stressed <laughs> when those cell phones went away, but uh, soon enough, we forgot that they were even a thing, right? Because when you're on the trip, there there was one digital camera that went around um, throughout, throughout the 10 days that we all had a, an opportunity to use. But not having cell phones there really allowed for you to fully bond with people and take in the experience and really smell and feel and, and listen and see everything that was around you because you couldn't rely on, on technology to, to share it. Or you couldn't like Snapchat it to everybody and look at it later. You really had to be there in the moment. And during this experience, everybody kind of had their own roles to fulfill every day. And as you can see on the picture with all the kayaks in it, that was the island that we did our solo on. So as part of the Outward Bound mission, you get a, if, if, if it's possible, it depends on the time of year, um, but you get a 24 hour period where you are alone. So you set up your camp. Uh, usually you can kind of see um, other members, but you can't talk to anybody and everybody kind of stays in their own region. And it's a time for you to to sit and reflect and really think, think about about life and, and what this experience means to you and and 
who you are and how you want to improve yourself and whatever comes to your mind. <laughs> um, so I ended up building a driftwood castle, which was a lot of fun and started thinking about kind of, of what I want to improve when I go home. And, and what I had really found on this trip was my desire to start, um, to start doing art again. I used to be really artistic and then throughout university and becoming busy, I just stopped doing it. And this trip kind of really made me realize how much I missed it and how much I enjoyed it. So since then I've actually come home and started to um, participate and really bring back uh, my artistic abilities. Uh, and it would, and that's really been amazing for me. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about stage two. Stage two. Hey Lisa, you can go to the next slide. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So my stage two work placement was based in Ottawa um, with the Canadian Wildlife Federation. So I was, at, sorry, I was in Canada, um, which is close to Ottawa and I was working at uh, headquarters. And here I was, and I, I was, I still am uh, an IUCN Youth Summit Coordinator. So the IUCN is the International Union for Conservation of Nature, which is one of the oldest conservation networks in the world. And they work towards conservation endeavors and influencing policy, um, both internationally and nationally. Um, in, so all over the world. <laughs> and so four years ago at the Conservation Congress, the, the IUCN made a promise to incorporate and engage youth more in in their organization so as the accumulation of four years work they were going they were planning the global youth summit their first ever global youth summit so this is the first time that they are going to have this event for youth by youth so i'd say our planning team our main planning team is 100 percent youth but we have other stakeholders that are intergenerational but for the most part it is for youth by youth and originally, this was supposed to be happening in Marseille in June, so June 10th. But due to COVID, we were no longer able to meet in Marseille. So now we're working on transitioning our workshops to an online format. So we will have several different, um, so like several different categories uh, of workshops that you can participate in. And we are current or about to start doing a call for applications again. If you are part of a youth organization uh, that has a topic that you would like to help train youth around the world on, you can uh, sign up here. If you go to the IUCN Youth Summit, Global Youth Summit page, it'll have a little like registration button um, or a little contact us button where you can uh, get more information about that if you and your organization are interested. Uh, so definitely um, keep an eye open for that. I'll try to share it on the Canadian Wildlife Federation page, uh, as well as through the, our Canadian Youth Biodiversity Network when I have kind of more information about what's happening. So yeah, so this position has been great. Um, it's kind of an opportunity that I never would have gotten without the Conservation Corps, for sure. Um, and it's a lot of international communications and logistics and figuring out how to work with multiple stakeholders and get a good taste of what the um, the NGO life uh, really looks like, uh, especially when you're working with huge organizations. Um, yeah, so you can go to the next one. So through this placement, I've also had the opportunity to present at, can you go back one slide? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I also have the opportunity to present to the Canadian Commission of the IUCN about the Youth Summit and what we're doing. So that's another point that I really want to emphasize about the Canadian Conservation Corps is that it is an excellent outlet and opportunity to network with various conservation organizations across the country because you're affiliated with the Canadian Wildlife Federation. So it gives you that that name and that credibility when you're reaching out to other organizations or when you're working for and with an affiliate organization. Um, so that's something that's really valuable and you build, you'll build connections with the Canadian Wildlife Federation. So if you need references down the line or if a job opens up, um, you will be a priority candidate. Okay, now you can go to the next one. 
so my stage three, uh, so outreach and service project. So it's kind of many things right now. I have started a YouTube channel. Um, my first video is about uh, invasive garlic mustard and how to remove, cook, and identify it. I'm hoping to put more videos about just different um, flora and fauna of Ontario, as well as more videos about invasives. I'm currently working on a dog strangling vine video. Hopefully I'll put that out soon. Uh, and I'm trying to get involved in the Butterfly Way project with the David Suzuki Foundation. So this involves planting um, native wildflower species instead of foreign species um, in lawns and parks, uh, et cetera. So I think that for that project this year, I'm gonna collect seed from, um, from different farmers as well as landowners, and then hopefully start seedlings and plant those next year. Also, because the IUCN project has been extended, um, completing that work uh, will also be part of my stage three. Yeah, so thank you. And now uh, Lisa's going to talk about her experience. All right. So uh, my experience is similar but also very different from Fallon. So firstly, um, my group name is Winter Thai, and that is because we actually started our CCC journey in the winter. So here is me doing one of our winter camping mornings when we woke up um, before the sun was fully up. Uh, my hair is was completely covered in fog. Falls. Um, so for my winter expedition, what we did was um, we actually spent two weeks winter camping. So this is this was one of the pictures that very resonated with me is that we had to carry all our gears in the winter and hiking through the Mount Carlton Provincial Park in New Brunswick. And in the picture was one of our instructors Ku and our guy and Ku was setting up a tent. The cabins you see in the picture, we actually did not use. We actually spent time camping outside. So through this experience, I had a new appreciation of um, our nature and our wildlife because normally in winter, um, I think very few of us actually would go out and do, do this crazy kind of camping um, in minus 30 degrees. But for us, we actually did that for two weeks. So what I learned was that we can actually live and ha have a very enjoyable time doing the trip. And, and also, we got a new appreciation of our wildlife because you would think a lot of them are hibernating in the winter. But we actually enjoy ourselves looking at animal tracks and seeing little birds dive into the snow, making little quincies to stay warm during the winter. During my stage two placement, I actually got sent to BC um, at Euclidean Aquarium, which was a collect and release aquarium where animals are collected for a maximum of eight months and they are returned back to their habitat. What was cool about my placement was that it also uses an open flow system so the water is actually pumped directly from outside the aquarium so we always find random critters in our tank and we will scramble and find find out what they are for me this was a very unique experience because um i've been working with different ngos um on marine science but that was my first exposure to the west coast of canada and through that i got to learn or learn about many different um, organisms. And on top of that, my past experience has been more focused on research. And this position allowed me to work on my environmental education skills. Finally, for my stage three, um, I started a campaign called Let's Talk Butts Campaign, which aims at tackling cigarette butt litter problem. And through that, I networked it with um, basically every single local NGO that I can find. So here's one of the pictures from, from my experience. 
what I did was that I would help them with uh, their regular programming. So that will be either invasive species removal or educational um, environmental education. And they would give me a, a part of their time to run my own programming with the, the students. So I would teach them about litter surveys, why cigarette butt was harmful to our wildlife and what we can do to tackle them. What was very cool about my project was that I was actually I actually managed to take my project global. So I started out with just um, tackling this issue in my local community, but through my uh, network, I was able to take it to Alaska, to the Philippines, and to Vietnam, um, talking about cigarette butts. So my project actually went global and was uh, it managed to which four different countries. So anyways, um, so if you do like the Canadian Conservation Program, here is the links to apply. Um, the requirement for this program is that you have to be from 18 to 30. So if you are younger than 18, you can actually apply to their new wild outside program for youth 15 to 18 is similar but also different from the Canadian Conservation Program in terms that that is a little shorter and um, the programming is a little different but you can read more about that on their website. Okay, any questions? Okay, I don't see any questions coming in yet. So if anybody does end up having any questions after we're not live anymore, feel free to reach out to us um, by email and we will be able to answer any questions that you may And have. also you can also um, send us a message on Facebook or follow us. Um, and we will be posting it to YouTube too. You can feel free to comment um, on our YouTube channel too. So Fallon, I got a question for you. What was your favorite <laughs> stage and why? What was my favorite stage? Well, that's uh, a complicated question. Um, my stage three is still kind of happening right now. So um, we'll see how that goes in the end. But stage one and stage two are very different, and I enjoy them for different reasons. Um, I think that in a lot of ways, my stage two was a lot more challenging than my stage one, just mentally, because you're working for this organization and you're kind of just thrown in and you have to adapt really quickly because you're only three months is a very short amount of time. And if you want to get the most out of it, you really got to be like gung ho from the beginning. Um, but I, stage one was really amazing and I had an excellent cohort and we all still talk and everyone's lovely and doing amazing things. Um, so I just think it's really nice how, how stage one gives you that connection to youth around the country who are also have the same mindset that you do. Um, cause it's not obvious, you know, it's not, not necessarily easy to find people that have, um, that have a passion for the environment. Um, so yeah, I thought it was, it was really inspirational to kind of see how other people <laughs> are brought together. What about you, Lisa? What was your favorite part? Um, so for me, for sure, it was, um, I think stage one brought me to experience a lot of, um, different things. For, for example, I never went to camp before, so I felt like I learned a lot of <laughs> survival skills. Um, yeah, stage two was interesting in its own way, but, um, yeah, it, as you say, it was interesting working just for three months. You feel like you are just, um, adjusting to the local community, your work culture, and then, you know, you are wrapping up. 
basically. Stage three, I actually quite enjoy because um, I could basically do anything I want and make an impact. And the Canadian Wildlife Federation really supported us on our different projects. Um, and for that, I feel like I very expanded my network because I was um, reaching out to all different NGOs. I learned about how to do grant writings, how to connect with state stakeholders. And I even did a delegation with my regional council telling them why they should do something about cigarette butt litter. So yeah, I think mm -hmm. for me, stage three is like an ongoing journey. Even now, um, I started my stage three over a year ago now. I'm still working on it and hoping to build off that. Yeah, you mentioned delegations. Uh, so that's another um, opportunity that you can get through the Canadian Conservation Corps like directly. Um, there will be open applications for um, Canadian Service Corps delegates. So the Canadian Conservation Corps is one section of the Canadian Service Corps, which is like which, which is a, a, a national youth initiative, but it has um, what should you say different organizations that focus on different things. So obviously the, uh, the Canadian Wildlife Federation and the Canadian Conservation Corps is on conservation and the environment. And then um, there are other um, Canada Service Corps programs too. So through that opportunity, I was able to go on a delegation um, to Switzerland um, with the United Nations Association in Canada. And um, I was able to go to the 11th Geneva Forum and talk about sustainable agriculture. So again, um, by participating in the Canadian Conservation Corps, it really does open, open the door to other opportunities that you don't even know exist yet. Yeah, for sure. Um, I still don't see any questions coming in. <laughs> yeah. So, if there are no questions, um, please remember you can watch this on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel later. And thank you very much for joining us today. Um, remember to tune in next Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And our topic for next week is environmental and political science. Um, I hope you have a good weekend. I mean, a good evening, not weekend. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't be weekend, Every day is a weekend <laughs> during COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, Fallon, for joining in. Yeah. Good. Thanks for your amazing work. <laughs> yeah, see you.